Okay. I, I, my, my theory is pretty simple. Um, start with E4. Oh, I did want to share my screen to make it easier on you. Um, but we're going to be in the studies, so it shouldn't be a problem. We'll be following along. Like, um, I played the French well, uh -huh. really well. And I like the French and hate it, even though I know how to play it, because it's you can like kind of bust out the first 15 moves without thinking mm -hmm. most of the time. Um, the, the downside I've seen to the French is people, the, the, the idea that it doesn't teach you to gain space. You play a cramped position. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And that's not that's not really helping your development if you're just playing a cramp position, even yep. if you play it well. It's not well and we'll talk about your opening repertoire, just not yet, right? We'll, we'll work up to the opening repertoire um, in a little bit, but we're starting off starting you off with um, just basic stuff, right? Yeah. We don't we don't want to. Well, I know, I know, I've been, I got, I've been, I played so bad the past like weeks. I don't know, driving me crazy. I was playing really well before that. I shot up like seven. Well, we'll yeah, see. Maybe. We'll see if we could do better. We'll see if we could do better. Hey, Ratchet, Ratchet is our first chatter back to normal. You know, the world is is normal when Ratchet is my first chatter. I feel like everything. Only beat them once. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, he's tough, and he's young, and he has. Yeah, he's only been yeah, playing about two years, so the, he definitely has talent. Um. Ah, yes, you were close linear, but you didn't make it. You didn't make it. Let me turn on some tunes for the background, guys, and we'll get started right away. Uh, because, as you know, I, I have only an hour and a half. It's a work day. Patrick probably wants to get done, too. So we'll, we'll go into this pretty hard. Now, this is kind of... Um, I'm flowing this a little bit with my Wednesday class. Oh, sorry, Ratchet. You still got time. Um, so I'm flowing this with my Wednesday class in the sense that we did an assessment. Let me share the uh, results of the assessment real quick. And really what we did, we did an assessment, a self-assessment, and I had each of my students, Linear's done it also. Um, I haven't looked at yours yet, Linear. Uh, but you self-assess where you feel that you have understanding first, knowledge. We have three components, guys. Knowledge, ability, skill, and performance. And I, I like this for anything. If you guys are managers at work, if you are managed at work, if you have a supervisor, uh, it could be for schooling, it could be for education, it could be for sports, everything, you have these three components. A knowledge base, some tasks don't require knowledge, <clears throat> some tasks are so simple there's no knowledge involved. But a lot of times, there is, it, almost every task, there is some knowledge base that would help. Even how to throw a football there's knowledge behind it, right? Go, go listen to the pundits when they're announcing football games, especially at college. Oh, look at his footwork. Oh, look at his hand. Look at where he's dropping his elbow. So there's a lot of knowledge to understand. And then there's the ability. Can you actually perform the task? Can you perform the skill? And then just because you can perform it doesn't mean you do perform it at the level you should, especially in stressful situations. Right? There, there's people that might be great at hitting golf balls on the range, but then you put them in a match play or in a tournament and they fall apart. They do terrible. Uh, happens with sports, happens with chess. So we have those three components we looked at. Patrick did it, he went through, and these are his ratings. Uh, green and red stand out for you guys to make it simple. Anything six or below, we did zero to 10. Six and below means he believes he, he doesn't really, he, he doesn't grasp the concept fully. Seven and eight, he could grasp it fully, he could have issues. Nine and 10, he definitely grasps, grasps the concept or principle fully. All right, so knowledge, I'm pretty proud. He's got nice numbers, good high numbers. Uh, and, and when he says things like, I don't fully grasp how to analyze a position, or types of positions open versus close, or awareness of undefended pieces. I think Patrick did a very good job. Patrick is our guest today, you see him on screen. Uh, I think he did a great job of self-assessing, uh, being honest and and forthright with himself. So, uh, peace coordination, transition to middle game. All right, and then on and on. All right, then we have end game knowledge, and he marked that. And what's funny with end game knowledge, I think Patrick, we're going to go over your last three games for this purpose of seeing if your assessment was accurate. And what's funny is that Patrick 
Um, didn't get to, he only got to one end game, I think, in the two game, in the three games. And a lot of times when you guys are starters, beginners, you don't get to many end games. And if you're not a beginner, like, you know, Ratchet says he's not a beginner, but if you're playing a beginner, you probably still don't get to end games because you probably make them in the opening or middle game. Uh, then we have our general principles, which uh, I'm, I'm very glad that you know the rules and the relative values of the pieces I would expect everyone does. Uh, but I put them in there because they are, they are principles that I need people to know. And I love it that you don't let your emotions get in the way. You said you understand that concept and we'll see if you perform it next, right? So that was our, um, just a quick run through, really just skimming through his self-assessment of knowledge. Now we're looking at how well does he apply those things. So applying the concept and understanding the principle and applying it for good and bad bishops, all right. Uh, so I would expect not to see you either create bad bishops on your own or free a bad bishop of your opponent. But really, this is one of those that it's just, it's just a nuance, right? It's an understanding about when a bishop is considered good and bad. It doesn't mean you have to do anything about it. So it's hard to, to demonstrate your knowledge of it because you don't really have to do too much about it. Um, but now six, un, um, awareness of uh, undefended pieces doesn't really apply, hasn't applied it well. But what's interesting is, Patrick, you said that uh, under how to analyze a position, you gave yourself a seven, and types of positions open and closed, you gave yourself an eight. And I seem to remember if I look at the knowledge level you said you have for those. Um, yeah, open and, okay. So where am I? That would be in middle game, I believe. Yes. So you said types of position open and closed. Your knowledge level is only at a six and your awareness of undefended pieces was only a six and your how to analyze was only a six. And what's funny is, not your fault, my fault. Uh, what's funny is until we have the discussion and I, and I teach and explain and I have to decide how this works, but really you shouldn't be able to perform at a higher level than you have knowledge of. Just a thought. Uh, I think there's exceptions to that where you might not have a lot of knowledge of something, but you do it naturally, right? But I think for the most part, if you don't have the knowledge base, you shouldn't be able to apply it at a higher level. So that's just a general rule for me to look at. Um, restraint, prophylaxis, blockade, excellent, excellent. And then so after we look at how well can Patrick apply things, we go to how well does he perform them? So I'm already, I went too fast, but um, let's go to performance of opening because this is where I am gonna spend most of my time. The knowledge and uh, ability to apply will help us once we've identified weak points to go back and decide, oh, well, you say that you're an eight, but you're not applying it. Why do you feel like you're not applying it? Uh, you say you're an eight in knowledge. Let's talk about it and make sure you are. Oh yes, you are. Okay, then why aren't you able to apply it? Oh, you're able to apply it, but we're not performing. Why? Right? So there are different whys depending on your knowledge level. And so it's important for me to find out first where you, how well you perform, and then go backwards and find where we need to improve so that you can perform better. Does that make sense? We're going to start at the end again, the performance, and work our way back to see what the cause is. All right, so in performance, you say you don't do really well with uh, central control. You say you do really well with king safety. Um, again, good and bad bishop, you do fine with. Uh, opening traps and opening study, by the way, I'm getting rid of. I'm, I'm removing it from the survey, from the assessment, because that would depend on which openings you study. And it was it was not really, I didn't, it came down to not really the principle I wanted, but I did change opening study to be understanding the importance or the use of opening theory. So that will be changing. But anyway, then we look at your performance in the middle game. How to respond to an attack, good, six, we gotta work on that. Uh, seven for how to analyze a position. I've analyzed your three games. I think we're not analyzing the positions well. So I would bump that lower, but we'll see. Uh, alignment only at six, okay. Types of positions uh, still up at seven. Awareness of undefended pieces, six. And uh, pawn structure consideration, six, okay. Open and semi files. Okay, so we're gonna spend our time in here. And what I did was rather than look at your score, I just went straight to your games and I looked at, and I did it differently. Normally I look at your three games or four or five games like I've done for Linear, like I've done for Ratchet. I lo usually look at the games and try to find areas to help you with and find one or two principles to work on. Because of our assessment and because of this new way of thinking as far as teaching and coaching, 
at least getting us a plan for teaching and coaching, right? Is instead of just picking out principles to work on, I am looking for specific principles that it seems like you either don't have knowledge, ability, or definitely not performing. And then if we see a theme of that skill or that knowledge or that, you know, that principle concept, we'll go back, check your analysis, check your assessment, agree that it is something and it is a priority, and we'll prioritize and go from there. And usually, I believe the ones that are higher priority will jump out at me first because they're the easier ones for me to see. Because if you're, let's say you're developing well, you have king safety down pat, you're doing control the center, you're not giving away any free candy. Well, you know, I won't have any of those pop up. And then the next one that might pop up is making plans or positional considerations, uh, maybe advanced tactics if you're not also not having any problems with alignment and basic tactics. So I think they'll, they'll organically show in priority order, but this is, you're helping me pilot this process. This is, I've organized and, and created a process around this, which I love to do at work and I love to do in other things and I hadn't done with chess teaching. With chess teaching, it's just always been organic and just go teach. Because of you guys, you're, you're, you're pushing me to be more organized and systematic. So I'm really enjoying this. We're creating a system for teaching and coaching and assessing and then reassessing. I'm really enjoying it. All right, Patrick, are you ready? I've talked enough. I think we're ready to get started. Yeah, we're good. All right. Hey, uh, guys. Uh, I'm... I'm Oli Pals, how you doing? Uh, Oli Pals, we don't have a game with you. I think Patrick played a game with you, but it wasn't it wasn't a rapid or slower game. I'm looking for, these are all 10 plus 5 games. We're going to go over three games that uh, Patrick played. They're all 10 plus 5. They were all within the last day. These are all recent, which I also like. I believe we can't only look at one game. We have to look at multiple games to see if it's a trend. So, Patrick, I asked in the... Uh, in the notes, uh, you didn't answer this one. So, what do you think? What's going on with this move? Uh, it's a bad move. All right, can you uh, can you talk up? Uh, just make sure you're talking nice and strong. And, and why is it a bad yeah. move? Uh, you're developing the queen early. It's also on a, a bad square to develop, so it can be attacked relatively pretty easily. So one, it can be attacked easily. Two, it's developed early. And it takes early, away the knight square. And it takes yeah. away the knight square. So what principle is white breaking? Opening, opening goals and specifically development good good poor development right it shouldn't you don't start you don't usually develop the queen first okay yeah and if you are if you are it's usually to h if they're going to play this system it's usually h5 to attack the pawn right yep yep you which is still not doing. good but yeah yeah i'm with you okay so uh so far so good right you have two minor pieces developed your opponent has one minor and one major developed so far, so good. He pushes d3. Doesn't develop a piece. I missed this here. This is my usual move. Okay. I, I, I like that. And I like that better than what you did for the simple reason of the note I gave you. Um, what's wrong with your move? I mean, you are, you're doing a double attack, right? Sorry. You have a nice double attack. You have a centralized knight. What could be wrong with this move? It neglects development. Yes. Getting another piece. And, and an important factor for me is why rush? I mean, we're attacking the queen, but the queen, if the queen doesn't move on her, on her own volition, what's their next move? You know, something like this? And do we care, right? I can, I can, like you said, I can develop another piece and I'll have three minor pieces developed. He's still got to develop another piece. And I always have this move, right? Yes. I, will I have... guess I, I figured at this point this you didn't always if he knows that this moves there, he can he can try to protect against it. So you only have this threat of hitting the queen and the potential check on C. Yeah. T2 so let's say he time. does something like this. So it keeps your knight out, right? Because I don't see what else is gonna totally keep your knight out. Yep. Alright. So the problem though is now he's moved three pawns. He only has two pieces and one of them is a major. Uh, you're still way ahead on development. You can pretty much do whatever you want, right? You can get your bishop free. You can even castle into this if you wanted to. Um, you really have no fears. You can even go and get rid of his bishop so he wouldn't have a bishop and he's gonna have double pawns either here or here. 
we're here. But yeah, right? I mean, so you're kind of in the driver's seat, even with this. And look, the knight doesn't have his best square. That knight doesn't have his best square. So from a general principle, development, peace coordination principle, you're fine. I, I, don't, I don't care that he's keeping my knight out of here. Um, I, I've got any moves I want. I could go from here so I have a place to drop the bishop back. I could just calmly leave this guy here as long as he wants to keep that knight from having its best square. I don't want to encourage him to improve it. Right? It's just a thought process. Why, why, help, him, why help him improve? So here, yes, he, he really has only one move if he doesn't want to lose the exchange. And so now you're developing and... And what's what's up with this move? What's good and bad with that move? Uh, it's bad because it blocks the bishop. That's why I said I, I messed up here in a second. It should have been bishop here. Bishop right. c5. Yeah, I mean you could, and and you know. And this pawn. You know you get things like and this though, like, right? Yeah. And then you got to decide yeah. here here, and then you got to decide, and then he's going to push you around some more, and so you, he gets a queenside pawn storm. But again, you have three pieces developed. He only has one now. So in general, yeah, I, even if the bishop goes here, I'm fine, right? Because as long as the bishop gets developed, you're fine. And so he pushes you, and he pushes you back to here. Okay, no worries. Yeah, you drew that arrow, not me. Yep. Yeah, so he offered you free candy, and I asked you in the chat um, why you missed it. We know you missed it, <laughs> right? This is just free candy. Why'd you miss it? I said because I'm not used to this resource of this knight being here. So like the my knights of this specific position, right? Usually this knight's here. You're gonna block with a bishop here. Okay. And it just because because you played this move, right? And then brought yep. the knight back here. Yep. This this resource is now here, which typically trying to play fast and stay ahead of time is yes. usually there. Yes. I, so I think that it's the two parts. One, you're trying to play fast, so you're not assessing the position as a whole. And two, you mentioned something that I think is critical, and it's a thing I kind of talk about when I say I don't want you or any of my students studying openings, is you start learning patterns. Patterns are great. Gary Kasparov says you need more patterns. Uh, Mikhail Botvinnik said, who taught Gary Kasparov, was his mentor. Um, pos understanding positions, but having these patterns in your head makes you a stronger player. The more patterns, the better player you're going to be. So in general, yes, we want you to have patterns memorized. Uh, the problem with leaning on patterns and especially opening theory especially is that we get used to things like, oh, okay, what do I do here? I do this or I do this. It's like automatic. And like you said, especially because you're trying to save time. You're trying to yeah, play it's automatic. not independent thinking. Yes, no independent thought and no assessment of the position. So the way I'd rather it happen, so this is a principle we can work on, uh, one of the things we want you to do is, yes, understand the pattern recognition, know what is normal, and know what you may be even normally like, but still hesitate and always check the position. You, you can fall back to, hey, yep, the position's like what I'm always used to, so I'll make the move I'm always used to. That's always available to you. But you need to see if there's something that you hadn't thought of. Now, conversely, it gets me into trouble. When I play in serious games, like 30 minutes, and I'm taking my time, or over the board, and I'll be playing an opening I've played 100 times, and they will not play something different. They will play a normal move. But it's one I just haven't seen very often. And I know what I'm supposed to do. I know the uh, theory, I know the correct move, per theory. And I will still sit there and fantasize about, but what if I did this? I've never done that before. I don't remember seeing it in a book anywhere, which should be the first clue. If I never saw it studying, I never ever saw this idea studying, it's probably a bad idea. That's why I never saw it, because they don't even put it in the book because it's a bad idea, right? But you're sitting there over the board and you're going, wow, that looks playable, that looks interesting, that looks dangerous, I, I'm gonna try that. And you regret it almost immediately, right? Because then they find, because you don't see the move, and, you, and they have to spend a lot of time to find it because you didn't even see it and you played this opening hundreds of times. And then they find the move that makes that move a bad move on your part. And you're like, oh, that's why I should never do that. Great, and now I'm stuck playing this line that I have no clue what I'm doing and it's not good. 
So I like to say, learning an opening, learning the theory for an opening is great. When someone plays a move that you go, wait, I've never seen that move. That's not normal. That's not a, that's not a move in the book that I've studied. That means it's probably a way inferior move that they didn't even bother to put it in. And if it's a way inferior move, then you want to say, let me slow down and see if I could take advantage of that move. That's all right. You say, can I take advantage? So when you went here instead of back to here, your opponent maybe has played this many times and maybe you always, you know, the person always goes to C6 and he always does this, right? Bishop to uh, G5. Yeah, pen, pen, but instead pen, of pen. him saying, wait, what's different? You know, he made this move. This move isn't normal. This move can't be good because it's not normal. It isn't what I normally see in the book. Maybe I can push pawn. Maybe I can trade the knight. Maybe I can bring out the queen and double up. Uh, I don't know. You know, he, he should be thinking, what can I do? And all he came up with was, I'll keep doing what I normally do, which is pin the knight, which, right, you could take him. And you did the same thing. You said, hey, you pinned my knight, and I know I normally do this. Yeah, I'll do that. And instead of looking and just saying, free candy, thank you, and you can resign now or wait, and let's see if I can't beat you with a whole piece up right after move four, five, you know, seven. So uh, you could be way ahead already. Hey, seven, how are you doing? All right, so yeah, um, it's a two-edged sword. Knowing the theory, I think, can be great. One, it makes it easy for you to get through the opening. But once you start playing something, now you said you're not used to this. You said it. You, you, I, I mean. Yeah, I, I mean there was there was two things unusual here for me that this this pawn on d6 and not having the bishop to c5. There you go. So and then so, having this knight here. All right. So you got out of your book, and once you get out of your book, and I did that. Um, I was doing the lone wolf tournament to start getting back to serious chess, thirty plus thirty games. And uh, I think it was the second game in Lone Wolf. I purposefully played a variation of an opening I play all the time, but I played a variation I've never ever played. And I did it purposefully because I wanted to analyze every move. And I knew if I played a variation I knew, I'd stop analyzing, right? I, I'd be playing by rote for at least half the moves, of the, if not all the moves of the opening. I would just be popping them out and not thinking. So I was trying to get my thinking working back the way I wanted it to. And so when you make a move that's not in, and you made another move that's not in your opening book, rather than become disparate that, ah, oh, I blocked in my bishop, it belongs here. I always put it here. Why didn't I do that? I want you thinking to yourself, okay, new position. I, even though I, I want to keep time, but by the way, you only spent five seconds. I, I, I want to go ahead and still really analyze the position. I need to analyze the position. So there you go, an opportunity analyze that position and go from there. Ah, Linear is sharing uh, some knowledge with us. Karpa famously got smashed by Sarawan because he played a move for one variation in a different variation. But because of a pawn being on h4 instead of h3, the move was a massive blunder. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Linear. This guy is pretty booked up for a new chess player, I tell you what. He, he, he is a wealth of knowledge for somebody who hasn't been playing chess that long or at that level for that long. I'm impressed. But yeah, so free candy. So it's interesting if we go back to your analysis, right? Because I'm sure, I am sure you did not mark yourself down on free candy, but, but let's see. And I believe free candy would be under general principles or yeah, free candy. And actually I I you gave like yourself a six. a six. You were very, very, uh, I, I mean, I like it that you, now, I like that. So you gave yourself a six and we're bearing out. And I definitely consider free candy as being one of those major first steps, priority steps. And it, what does it require? It takes a little bit of time, quick recognition, not pattern recognition, but recognition that this piece is undefended. Oh, it's attacked, right? And we, and what we've didn't given you before is the litany and I've given it to everyone. And I, I tweak it the way I've always done it, but Rosman has made it more famous than me, so I try to give him credit, is um, checks, captures, and attacks. He says threats. I say, how did the position change, right? That bishop moved to here. How did the position change? Well, it's no longer protecting here. Otherwise, it has these two squares that it didn't have before. How else did the position change? Well, it's sitting in my wheelhouse now, right? It's, it's under attack by one of my knights. Wow, it's under attack by one of my knights, and 
I could take it. Now, let's say I didn't realize that's part of the position change, right? What's attacking, well, it's attacking here, but what also, what's now attacking it? Let's say I missed that. And then I go to checks, I have no checks. Uh, captures, uh, all captures, look for all captures. Oh, I could take this pawn. Okay, and I'd lose my queen and then I'd have nothing. Okay, so, so that's a capture, but not a good one. Uh, oh, I have this capture and uh, it's free candy. I guess I could take that, but let me keep going. I have no other captures on the board. All right, do I have any attacks? Because, you know, just because I have free candy, maybe I have a better attack of some kind. Like I could threaten checkmate, like maybe come here and go, no, you know what? Nothing's better than the free candy. And you take the free candy. But you have to be able to go through at least, at a minimum, how to position change, check captures and attacks to find it. And we forget that because we're in the opening, we're just moving, we, we get into the habit by moving by road. So my challenge to you would be, even if you think you know the opening, I want you at least going through how the position change checks, captures, and attacks. If you know the opening as well as you think you do, then that will go very fast, extremely fast, right? So back here, you'll go, um, okay, what do I like to do? I like to do this, but I'm thinking about doing something different like I told you about I did in the other opening. So I'm gonna do this um, first. Yeah, I think I'll do that first. But first, let me, before I do it, Marty said I have to do how the position change checks, captures, and attacks. How the position change, bishop is protected. Okay, I wasn't gonna attack it anyway. I mean, I could. I could attack it because now he can't get back. Wow, so I can get rid of that bishop because if he goes here, I push my pawn. If he goes back to here, I could take him. I could take him. I can get rid of this bishop. This pawn is not under attack. So that pawn, how to change the position? That bishop can't run away. I can win, I can trade off that bishop by force. Right, this would be, a, so you'd have to decide if that's worth it. But you would notice it because you'd say, how the position change? The bishop can't run away. Next thing, how the position change? This bishop now has room. What else? The queen can't get to here and here anymore because this pawn is in the way. So I just need to quickly, quickly, right? I, I don't want to spend more than 30 seconds identifying how the position changed. Now, it might take you two minutes when you first do it. But if you get into the habit of checking how the position changed, you'll get faster at it just like everything else, right? Puzzles, doing puzzles, doing tactics. So I want you looking at it and saying, how did the position change? Well, these squares are no longer under attack by that pawn. Do you really care? It's not gonna be anything that's gonna linger in my mind because I see at a glance that these squares are still being attacked multiple times, right? But I just should notice that the pawn is no longer attacking those squares, but more importantly, the bishop has freedom, the king can go here, the queen can't get to here, uh, the bishop can't get back to here or here. Uh, okay, that's all those things change and he's protecting these two things. Cool beans. Now you can decide what you want, if that matters to you enough to make a plan. Uh, next part, do I have any checks? Yeah, I have one check. Do I like it? No, he just pushes the pawn and that actually helps him. So I, I disavow that check immediately. Do I have any other checks? No. Do I have any attacks? Yes, I can attack his queen. Do I have any capture? Should have come first, sorry. I have a capture, but it's protected too many times. So the capture's no good. So now what attacks do I have? I can attack the queen. I can attack the bishop, but he has one, two, three, and I only have two protecting, so I'd be losing material. I can attack the bishop this way, but he'd just take it. Oh, I can attack the bishop this way, and guess what? He's trappable where I can force a trade of my knight for his bishop. Doesn't mean you should do it. I don't think you should, because I like this queen here. I like that bishop there. They're really not gonna do too much. I can develop, 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 and get ahead. So I'd be looking for to be developing fast, that, that'd be my goal. But you should identify captures and attacks, right? You, you, you should be identifying them and then you move on. But okay, so I think that's a principle we're gonna work on is the, and that's part of the analyze the position, which you said you're weak at. Analyzing the position is, um, do I have, what? how do the position change? That's a key part. And then checks, captures, and attacks is the added benefit of figuring out where we go. So again, hopefully you would spot that and you take that off. All right, let's see what else happens. So um, good or bad, what's going on over here? This actually, I think this is good, those structures. Um, this bishop's now a bad bishop. He has no, no scope. 
All right, so you said you understand bad bishop and good bishop. So th you said this is a bad bishop. How about this guy? Is he a good bishop? He is, yes, he's better than better than the dark squared bishop right now. All right, so there is in our, in our self-assessment, we had good bishop, bad bishop, and we had good pieces, bad pieces. So I will agree with you that this piece is worse than this piece. Totally. If we're talking good and bad pieces, yes, fine. This is a bad piece. It's not really totally bad because usually it's bad because your own pawns are in your way, not your opponent's pawns. So you've, you're using restraint, prophylaxis, right? You're keeping this bishop out. You've restrained that bishop's movement. But the bishop on its own isn't bad because he didn't. he's not blocking his own movement. He's attacking a pawn, right? He's still out and about. So this guy's also I guess attacking. my thought process is I neutralize this bishop. Right? Yeah, neutralize, restraint, use restraint to neutralize. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, thinker teacher. All right, so, uh, but you said you gave yourself a pretty high rating on good bishop, bad bishop, and I'm going to fix that right now, lesson right away. The good bishop is determined by your central pawns. It is a concept, right? Not a overflowing, a, you know, good piece, bad piece. Good piece, bad piece, you're right. It's about um, flexibility, about mobility, about mobility mostly. But depending on the color of your pawns, so black's bad bishop is the dark squared bishop, period. Neither bishop has moved yet. Neither bishop has a lot of scope, right? But this is considered Black's bad bishop. Yes. Just by concept, in this opening, this bishop is the bad op bishop. And for White, in this opening, this is the bad bishop. And that's why he put it outside the pawn chain to make the bishop active, because if he left it inside the pawn chain, you'd see why it's so bad that it's a bad bishop. So the bad bishop is just a concept to understand which bishop plays well with the pawns and does he need to be on the outside of the pawn chain. So your bad bishop needs to be on the outside of the pawn chain to make him more active. The good bishop, which is your the white's dark squared bishop, didn't care about the pawn chain because no pawns are stopped. None of his pawns are stopping his mobility. You're using restraint to neutralize. I like the term, and we'll keep using because that, if it, especially if you remember it. So you're kind of neutralizing the bishop with your pawns, but understand that he's not a bad bishop because his pawns aren't on that color. And we're only talking center pawns for the concept of good and bad bishops. But even if I were to say good piece, bad piece, I'd say this piece is restrained, maybe neutralized to a degree, but it's not technically bad because his pawns or pieces aren't blocking him in. Your bishop is a bad bishop. This is the bad bishop because of these pawns. And your bishop is bad because he's not outside the pawn chain. Yep. He's stuck behind the pawn chain. Yeah, it so goes back to the earlier move of not playing c5. Right, right. So this is, this is looking at the concept of bad bishops and you are showing the exact example of why it's bad. And he took his bad bishop. Remember, this is why you need to understand. It's a bad bishop, but he put it outside the pawn chain so that it could become a valuable piece, more valuable than your bishop right now. So how does this bishop get valuable? You get him outside the pawn chain if you can, or you get him outside before you close up the pawn chain. Or at some point, at some point, you're going to have to give him freeing moves. It might be the end game, but you're going to have to give him freeing moves. All right. All right. So good stuff. That's that's what we're learning, right? That's what we're doing. So how about this move? What's going on here? One, I was trying to keep the attack on this bishop, and two, to give this bishop scope. Now. Okay. So you're trying to make your bad bishop have activity and and scope. Uh, and you are attacking the bishop, which of course he has to reply because otherwise he loses the bishop. So you reply again. And so the last few moves, we've done a lot of pawn pushing. Um, how are you going to get king safety? Well, that, that hurts me here in a minute. But originally was uh, my plan was a castle long. Okay, so you could castle long. And I should have prepped the first. I should have went queen e7. I, could, I can put this bishop here anytime. Yep. 
I really could have waited for him to move. Well, Anything. move the knight, it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. yeah, you could have waited as long as you wanted because no matter what he puts on that diagonal, you're protecting that square. Yep. So you could always put your bishop there, but... but. Should, should have went queen e7 first, which then still protects what, what ends up happening is when he brings his queen yep. here, is it still protects this pawn here. Yep, now you there is another, another consideration. Closer to castling. There's another consideration for king safety. He could stay in the middle. Yep, if you're, which I think if, I say, I think he, he felt safe in the center at this point. Right, if the position is closed, it's okay that your king doesn't castle. It is okay that your king doesn't castle if the position is closed. So, again, if we go back and look at your uh, self-assessment for king safety, though, right, we want to go back and look at that, and that would be definitely under opening, right? And I believe it's also under uh, middle game. So, uh, middle game, middle game, and we're looking for performance first. I think I gave myself an 8, eight for king safety, roughly. Oh, okay. I thought it was under uh, middle game performance. Oh, right there, very first one. So you gave yourself an 8. But I'm looking at the game and I'm thinking you did not take care of king safety this game. But that's only one game and there's always anomalies. So we don't stress out about an anomaly. We do not stress out about an anomaly. Uh, by the way, do you have any other moves here? Yeah, you could play this pawn up. And did you look as at well. that you could as, offer, a, as you could a candidate? Offer trade queens. Yeah, I didn't want to move this pawn right away because I was still had the idea that I could potentially castle long. I oh, didn't okay. want to. I didn't want so, to move this pawn. I think but I know the king's safe in the center, and you can also go king side because he doesn't really have enough space to do anything on the king. Yeah, side. he'd have to break through, which he probably can, but he'd have to take the time. But with his queen over here now, remember his queen went here, now his queen is here. So now with his queen over here, the bishop over here, and his pawn's already kind of advanced, I'd say, well, maybe castling queen side isn't going to work for you. But this would also take away a center square, also threatening, right, tempo gaining. Threatens to fork the two pieces. Um, yeah, I, I think this is definitely a viable move. And and doesn't cramp like the king gets stuck and the king gets stuck, right? Everything gets stuck here. And you take away the defender of this pawn. And realize when you do this, he has to respond. Right? I mean, he has to respond. He's not going to give you his queen. And so he went logically. Now he's doubled up on here. By the way, you have two attacking it protecting but he's now attacking like you said that pawn that that you had said if he had moved here first you were you know it's you're okay because you're protected and you're right but you got to remember how did the position change here the position changed that you were no longer protecting this pawn again i want you to get used to thinking how did the position change how did the position change how did the position change all right and then the position changed, and this move I didn't understand at all. Uh, you're, yes, you can castle now, but you gave away free candy, so second... Yeah, I was playing auto autopilot to try and castle, knowing what my long-term plan was and not looking at the change in the position. Yeah, and it looked like you only spent uh, 10 seconds. So, again, right, where do we spend our time? You said time management you're weak at, and I agree. Uh, you could have put the rook here, you could have pushed the pawn, you could have done a myriad of things, but one thing, uh, you can even go here with the knight. But the one yeah, thing, the one thing, cool. oh no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Well, I guess you still could. Oh, not now. Not yeah, now, you, you I still guess, could. Yes. You still could have. Because now the bishop's under attack and the queen... Yeah, the bishop's hanging and the queen is. So where does the queen have to go? The queen has to go here, the only square, and then you could just say, thank you for the bishop. So you could have. That would have been a nice tactical shot. Anyway, um, but the point is, the bottom line is, right? We're we're miss. So we missed a free knight bishop. We missed this free pawn. And both of them, you're telling me, is not because you um, don't see them when you look for them, but that you're not looking for them because you're kind of locked into either what you remember you should be doing, or just whatever you had decided to do ahead. Okay. Yeah, putting, so, your, putting your plan ahead of your opponent. And, and knowing that you've only spent a minute and 30 seconds total so far, plus the five second increments, um, yeah, we're, right Right now might be a really good time to take your time and find the best move. Um, it's, right, it's... Yeah, on the previous move. Yeah, this is way too scary to not check. be finding the best moves here. 
Yeah, you should be looking for the best moves even way back here because you're in a new position for you, right? You, you need to take your time. We need you to do the analysis. All right, and then things just kind of fall apart a little bit. Uh, but we get to here. Let's go from here because here was interesting to me uh, that you had uh, choices. I don't know what that arrow is for because that's just, you just gave away a bishop. So you're going to take with the pawn or with the knight is really the only choices you have. And I have no problem with taking with the knight. Okay. Now he does f3. What's wrong with that move? Backward. You put a backwards pawn here. Yeah, well, yeah. And it's on and the base so, And he weakens range, the so. dark squares around this king. Very so. good. Yes. It weakens dark squares. It takes away, which he couldn't do right now. Couldn't get rid of him. Yeah, the knight square as well. Yeah. I can only go here now. Yeah, but I think his idea is that if he takes, he's going to open up a file eventually. Of course, he's hoping you take so that he can open a file at your king. Okay. Look for a trade of bishops. Now, why didn't you just take? I think I didn't take because I was trying to get my queen to... If he takes, like, it gets my queen to e6, which now protects this g, gotcha. this g4 pawn. So you're not taking, hoping he'll take. 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 Okay. That's fair, but if he didn't take now, chances are he's not going to take later. Right? I mean, why not take right away on his thinking? So my thought is if you take, you double his pawns. Granted, he's got a lot of pawns coming down here where you have nothing. But it's just something I'm asking because I want to know your thought process. Plus, Guess my other thought too is if you double these pawns here. Uh -huh. So I did think about this: is if you double these pawns, it allows him to push that pawn to c5 and break this structure a little easier. True, true. But now you remember you said you wanted your queen here. Yep. You get there with tempo, don't you? Tempo. Yep. And and I don't think I care. Where's he going? And then the slide. slide. Where's he going? He can't get into any of these squares. He can't get into any of those squares, and now, yes, one of the rooks, you could choose. But yeah, you're going to get a rook on that open file, and look, his knights aren't developed, his rooks are not talking, he still hasn't castled. Do you like this? I don't know. I do. Might not be awesome, it might not be the best, but I like it, personally. I like this a lot better than... This. I don't see that he's, again, this was his best square, right? He's over here protecting the king. We do have a wide open king area. I don't like you moving him away. So, this is a little deeper. Yeah, I guess I thought I thought to move him away because I figured he had no room to advance, but I guess he is protecting here. He's protecting, he's attacking, he's attacking. We attacking. could him here. Yeah, he's got a lot the of squares. original plan was to reroute him here and put two attackers on this pawn. Yeah, but he has two protectors with a, with a already. Potential check. Yeah, right now. Yep. Yeah, and he's going to probably chase your knight eventually because he's going to get tired of that knight. So you don't, this this requires two moves to not win anything. In fact, it requires two moves to not clearly attack anything. Yeah, Biz Busy says he likes d5 even because you have one, two, three pieces attacking three attackers, d5. Yeah. And he only has two protecting. And that would open up the board for you, which his king is in the middle. King's he has only middle. one minor piece out. You have all three minor pieces out. So opening up the board actually benefits you. Yep. I like this busy to open up personally, but yeah, I your way opens it up too. And by the way, if you're not sure about this and you're worried about this, you could even have prepped it by creating alignment. Create the alignment yeah, first. Correct. And then you could... Then you could push the pawn for sure. I mean, you'll have four and the alignment to go with it. So that way, after if he backs up his bishop, if you end up taking, you know, life is good because he either takes he can't take this way because he'd lose the queen, and he has to take this way, which means he took the pressure off of that pawn, and you're still looking good. Yep, lots of good moves possible for you, but this would not be one of them. This takes too much time, and to, it takes too much time to end up not attack, not winning, not threatening to even win the material. I have time on the clock too to figure out a plan. You have a lot of time. 
And you gotta understand he's probably gonna push you at some point, so you have to decide, do I have time to do all this if he's gonna push on me? And I think no. So I wanna change, I wanna be, I wanna be the aggressor since I know I'm gonna get pushed away and that queen is looking at getting into my grill in here. That's why, think about it. The other thing is how the position changed. Part of how the how did the position change is identifying why your opponent made the move they made. So why would he move here instead of taking your bishop? Or saving his bishop back here so he can take back this way or even take with the queen got and the, not double the square for the queen. Yeah, he's looking for this x-ray. Now, you might say, yeah, but he can't get to me. Ha ha, he can't get to me. But then you can look pretty quickly and say, well, he did that so he can have this, the same way I would do this so I can have that. Um, and I don't have this yet. I have two pawns in my way, but I have a plan to clear those pawns. Does he have a plan to clear my knight? Oh, yeah. He get chess or, we'll even, yep. or that. Either one of those, and the pawn clears them immediately. The knight doesn't clear them immediately and gives you some counterplay, like taking here. But, yeah, he's going to clear your knight. And after, where's your knight going to go? And are you happy with his right? Are you happy with his queen being here or here? If your knight's here, do you think that's a fair trade of position? And I don't like his queen here. This looks very scary. Even though there's nothing, like it looks like he can't get to you, it looks very scary. But anyway, so yeah, I don't think you have time for these kind of moves. You have to decide um, why did he do this? How did the position change? He's not attacking, he's not attacking this anymore. He's now attacking, oh, he's attacking this diagonal. Why is he attacking that diagonal? Because it's weak. I have no pawns to keep him out. It's weak. Can I do anything about it? No, I'm going to be in trouble if I let him in. So what can I do? All right, so that's to be the thought process we want to go through. All right, let's go get through this. Um, let's see. I've, I've, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think you know here. what's wrong with that move, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and the rest was uh, pretty fundamental. I don't think... Uh, yeah, this is... And, and you're low on time. You're at 28 seconds the whole time. And so, yeah, no worries. All right. Uh, but I think we're getting the themes, right? So one is free candy, but it's because you're playing too fast, playing by rote, and not doing the analysis. I think if you did the analysis, you wouldn't give away free candy. I don't think you're like some of my uh, very beginner students that don't even notice when they put their queen next to a pawn, right? That's not you. Yeah, I, I notice that it's playing quick or playing slow and then playing fast. All right, so I did ask you some questions about this. Uh, but it's mostly just if you knew the opening. Um, so let's keep going till we get to maybe something that's a little bit more deeper principle. So, what's with this move? So my understanding on this, like from studying this a tiny bit, is you now block this bishop off and you okay. can get this pawn chain here, and essentially this bishop's now in the cage, right? Okay. The this so way. you're going based on your theory that you remember. Theory. Okay. All right, that's fine. Because um, for general principle, um, the reason you put him here was for this pressure. And yep. so I want to make sure you had a good reason to push that pawn. Uh, because it's, it, if you notice, it changes how the rest of the game goes pretty quick. Yeah. Versus and it's keeping... actually like I... Sorry. When I went back and looked at this, what I, what I should have done is focused more on this really strong king side attack that you have the possibility of launching right away. Yeah, I mean, you have you some... This, you block this bishop off. He can't get out over here at all. Sorry. Yeah. Here at all. Yeah. I mean, now you do have two some... bishops behind on chains. You have some possible threats. Definitely have some possible threats. You have nice places to camp your knights. Um, you have options, right? You have game play that I would, I would play differently. But if you're playing based on what you read in theory and you said, yeah, you know, this is going to be a queenside attack. I'm going to take all this space. That's fine. But I... I I love king hunting. I mean, to me, that's fun. So I, I would want to do more king hunting than anything else. But yeah, yeah. Everything is wrong with F3 in that other game. Thanks, Linear. Ask Jose. Uh, Josue. Actually, and this game right now is against Josue. So, yeah. <laughs> just, just for you guys. I also have played a couple Caro games against him, and we get into the standard advanced variation. So I try to throw something new. Okay. Say, hey, let's, let's, both go, let's both go into the weeds here, you know? Okay, so my biggest problem with this is you're just not developing. So I would have liked the bishop here. I would have liked the bishop here. Um, I would like to just see you finish developing, get your queen off the back rank, 
and then think about things like that. That's just a general thing I want to see you do to prove to me that you understand and can perform the concept of development. Right? You gotta develop, gotta develop, gotta develop. And so I want to see you yep. develop quickly. All right. So uh, also note that your opponent did not develop a piece. This is not considered development. Right? I mean, he's trying to better yep. position it, maybe, but he's got two minor pieces and a queen to get off the back rank, and he fails to do any of them. So again, you have, that's another reason at this point, you have an opportunity to jump ahead in development. So I'd love to see, you, well, that's still not development, right? Yeah. Taking the pawn is not well, development. I'm thinking like you can you can develop a little, like if you get these two pieces out and take there, he's pretty cramped because he's still. Yeah, but you don't need form. to take it to get there. You could just go there. Right? I mean, you could just go there. Yep. Which ends up happening, I think, this bishop. Because you don't worry, here. right? I mean, you're okay. You're fine. You're, you've got all four minor pieces developed. He only has two. You're way ahead in development. You should be winning this game. He's got all these pieces to move yet. Anyway. All right. So um, you you start you played per what you understood, right? Now he takes. Here, I think you have to make you have to take your time and decide which pawn to take with. And let's see how much yep. time you took. You took uh, ten seconds. And it seems like, well, you know, how much do I have to really think? I think you have to think a ton because it's going to change the flavor of the game. If you take with this pawn, you have a pass pawn. You have to take with this pawn, you have a pass pawn also. But you have a protected pass pawn and your idea, I mean, you don't have this open file anymore for, for him. He doesn't have, I'm sorry, you don't have this open file. It's not a fully open file. It's a semi-open stuff for him. Um, you are giving up the whole center. So that's the other consideration. You're giving up the, you have no center pawns. So these are the dynamics that you really do want to think through. And I'm not saying your move was good or bad. I just... uh, actually, I didn't think about that until after you said it, but I, I kind of like the idea of having this pawn chain here. Okay. I mean, I, I didn't like, what I didn't like was giving up this center pawn though. Yeah. Giving that's up the center pawn is extremely scary. Uh, but you, you know, you'd have this pawn chain. If he ends up trading off, then you'd have two pass pawns. And yes, he would have one pass pawn, but it's a center pawn where all your pieces are. It would be wild and wooly game. Definitely, definitely wild and wooly. So we look at this move, right? He moves his knight, all right, blocks his bishop, but he develops it. Not to the best square. No clue why he didn't go here. No clue. And so now he, uh, well, maybe because this was his plan all along, which more power to him because you still are going to try to get a pass pawn. Uh, but yeah, so don't like it as choice of development. Now he's got his bishop where his bishop can be free. Yay! Um, so you would think he would develop it. No, he takes a pawn. So now you have an open file which he cannot put a rook on because of your last developing move. He moves his knight a second time. He still has three undeveloped pieces. This is the theme. I'm, I'm seeing this theme over and over again undeveloped pieces and you push now yes there's a general rule we push past pawns but we want to push it with with tempo with um threats do you see any other ways that you could be moving about and developing yeah you could have went you could have brought queen out and brought a rook behind it now why why do i want my queen out can't he just chase me he can't i'm not saying that square does just off the top of my head but well, i, I don't know that there. he could just chase you you have this. Chase you, yeah, because you can block it. You got the and knight now knight. you can push you with that. tempo. Yeah. Before you weren't pushing with tempo. Now you push with tempo and he has to go back. This situation feels different to me than when you just pushed the pawn on its own. Now I can bring the knight in, possibly. I like that. Um, I can push again, because where does this queen go? Oh, yeah, it's protected. I'm right. Yeah, his queen has to go here, and then what? Now he's out of squares. So what is that called? Right. Trapping the queen. It's called a win. It's called a win. Yep. And, and how could that have happened? Just here, right? Boom. 
And if he does a natural move like to get you out of his face, the game falls apart. You get to check, push with the pawn then. And, right, you get to push with the pawn. Oh, let's get rid of that variation. You get to push the pawn. He has to either be smart enough to, and you know, moves like this saying, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, that's just bad. No, that's moves like cool. this, moves like this saying, oh, you take me, I'll take you. Doesn't really work, right? Because then I get to queen. And if you want to take my bishop now, go for it. But I got a queen. So he's got to take the queen one way or the other, right? And now I save my bishop and I'm up. That can work. This knight, move, this knight centralizes and protects the bishop. Yeah, the only now. problem with that is now he's attacking you. Yeah, here. And now you got to move your knight again. And he gets to win material because when you move your knight, yeah. the bishop's not protected. So you got to, you remember, um, the other thing about this is you have a piece that's under attack. How does position change this pawn? This How does pawn position push. change and, and that you have a piece under attack. There's five ways to get out of an attack. And um, defending is one of the options. But you can defend this way, this way, this way. Defending is an option, but it's probably not the best option in this scenario. Right? I kind of like this, yeah. actually. This, yeah, that's what I was thinking. You just battery that right there. Yeah, and if he wants to come out here, I might even just trade him off. And then after I trade him off, then I take this open file. His king is still stuck on the back rank where he's, you know, trapped. Yeah, I'm thinking you have an easy win. All right, I think that, uh, so again, we're looking for principles, right? And so this, while I like push the pawn, what's more important than pushing a pass pawn? You're still technically, you're in, you're in the middle game. I'll say you're in the middle game. Middle game for me, and, and people have different, it, it's, it's flexible, a lot of people have different definitions of when you're in the middle game. For me, I consider you in the middle game once you're finished with the opening phase. And I consider the opening phase done when you're finished developing. Now, since you have still one more piece to develop, I can technically say you're not out of the opening. But but since you only have one more piece to develop, I, I can buy it, right? That you're you're probably out of the opening. You've traded well, some pawns. Game. But but the rule still applies. Your number one goal, your number two goal, and your number three goal in the opening is to develop, 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 and we still need to develop and and it's a beautiful square. You're going to be protecting this. You're hitting this square so that you can push this pawn with protection. This is beautiful. You got the next two squares protected. Yeah, look at that. I mean, and, and the knight's ready to come in. The bishop's ready to come in. The knight's ready to come in. This is dominant. This is dominant. Now, you might be saying, yeah, okay, okay, fine. You might find that move. How am I supposed to find that move? My simple way for that's you an, to it's find an easy that, move to find. It should be an easy move to find because you need to develop. Your rooks, aren't, your rooks aren't talking, and that's the furthest advanced square for the queen. And what else does it do for you? His only good square for him to put his queen, because he can't go he here, a, he can't a go five. here, he can't go here. Yeah, this is like his best square for his queen. So you like, you said you like to neutralize. This would also neutralize his queen. We've done multiple things at the same time. Finish development, neutralize his queen, put your queen on the best square. If he makes you this know. kind of mistake, you're like, great, I get, I get that. Or, or you could still do that. Because now yeah. he doesn't have that square even. So now he has to go back here. And then you still get that move. Which he has to come back here, and then you still get this move, but now the pawn is nice and deep and protected, he can't get to here. But I would I would not fault you if you didn't see that, oh, I'll push with the pawn first, because then he can't go here, and he, he only has one move. I could see, okay, I, you might miss that the pawn there is the better move than the bishop, because you see that you get a skewer. I'll buy that. That'll be okay, because you'd still be winning, right? You'd still be up the exchange. Yeah. But yeah, the pawn push is still better. So again, a chance right here would be where I'd say, take a minute. Take a minute because you're probably going to win the game based on what you do next, whatever it is. Take a whole minute and find the best move. And back here, same thing. So rather than just push, and let's see how long you took. That one you actually took like two minutes. You took a lot of time. 
I don't know what you were thinking, so I, we can't. It's hard for you to maybe go back, but hopefully that was a candidate move. Hopefully that was a candidate move, because that would also attack, right? Same concept. But the queen is the last piece to develop. We'd have both rooks be able to swing over, and oh my goodness. Yeah, the queen side's under control. So for me, if I'm making puzzles for you, this would be a puzzle. Right? This would be a puzzle for you. Now, you're going to remember it, but I don't care. I want you to remember why it's it's a puzzle for you and for you to pattern recognition when you go, my opponent has three pieces undeveloped. His rooks can't talk for two more moves. I have a pass pawn. I have a beautiful bishop. I have a beautiful bishop. And I have both knights in their best squares ready to go. Uh, wow, the only piece that I can improve. See, this is the other thing, right? This is a little later in the middle game. Yeah, at least active piece right now is your rooks and your queen. Yep, when you don't know what to do, you take your... Find a piece that is not well-developed. Back to development. Find a piece that's not well-developed and develop. Put them in a better square. And my gosh. Woo! I think I think if you did that, he has to do things like bring the bring a knight back. I think he doesn't really have much choice. Yep. Looking at it now, I should have. I don't know why I should have prepped this more. Yeah, and and not even. I don't want you to think. See, that's what like I don't. Prepping it, prepping it, prepping it here by you know, finishing your development. Yes. So that I understand that concept it. that you want to push the pawn. And you're thinking, should I prep? I'm saying I want your first thought to be, I haven't finished developing. I got to develop. develop. Yeah. I got to develop. Now, after you say, okay, I could develop here. Then you could stop and say, okay, what else could I do? Well, I want to push a pass pawn. Do I need to prep it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I, I want to push that pass pawn. So, so far I have develop a piece, push a pawn. Okay, what else? Can I attack? I get a check. Does it work? No, he's got three pieces on it now right the knight went here so he's got three pieces on it um so by the way when your opponent's behind in development you want to jump up even further ahead in development if you can or or look for opportunities to win the game because he's so far behind in development and your opponent is pretty far behind in development so i also like moves like this but but you have better right because the bishop is doing so well you don't want to take away that square so the knight would, you don't need the knight there yet. Uh, but anyway, yeah. yeah so I, neg I neglected the queen because I think my thought process was, I, know, I already know it in the game was you can push this pawn because this square yep. is under control. And it, it just seems like if this pawn gets here, it's just a thorn in your side for the whole game. And it is. But it could have been a much bigger thorn if you took away this square from the queen. Yep. Right? And so that's why I said if you had done the bishop move, I would understand. I would totally understand the bishop move first. But the only reason why I wouldn't want you to use the bishop is the queen is your last piece to develop. And because you could do this and then do this, um, yeah, I would do the queen first. Now, he could do things like this to say, yeah, you're not coming through. But, you know, first, you, you could still push. <laughs> yeah, you can't stop this. At that yeah, point. you're still going to have fun. But, yeah, I mean, this would be, maybe this is the move he needs to make and answer the queen. Well, if you do it with the bishop, he can't push the pawn. So, you know, yeah. if he does something like this to try to trade, oh, you, we said you could just push him away first, and then you could get in here. But, but, we also know you just win the queen this way. So, again, back to the bishop move, maybe. Maybe the bishop move is still best. Let's say he moves a knight in. You attack the knight. Yeah, okay. And you still win the queen, don't you? Yep. So maybe the bishop is the better move than the queen. But I want you to find the queen because the queen is the piece that's not developed. But yeah, if you're checking for checks, it captures and attacks. Here's an easy attack. Here's an easy attack. And then that just becomes even more devastating. And the bishop will be protected. So this is a playable move for sure. Nice, obvious attack with the hidden threat of I'm going to trap the queen. I love it. All right. We spent way enough time on that concept, right? Um, so here, though, real quick, he moves here. Why take? I think I pondered this for a minute, and I took because I didn't. 
want this pin and the you mess did, it up. You did I didn't want to have my way. bishop just. And I didn't want to have my queen continuing to feel like it was protecting this bishop. Okay, but is there a rush? Can't you take it later? I guess there's not a... Like, you could take it later, yeah. I mean, you might be... I could see you might be worried about him getting in this square. Yeah, and then it blocks off. Yeah, but then your knight gets to protect... I think my attack. original plan was, if you take here, we're now, we're now going to clear this knight out of the way, or should, which protects this pawn. Hmm, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, in general, I, I don't want to take because it moves his queen into an attacking square for the, right now he's not even attacking your pawn. So what else might be another option at this point if you don't take the bishop? You don't take the bishop? Yeah, if you don't take... knight to protect this pawn. Okay, you can move the knight and that way you protect this pawn, the knight protects that pawn. What else could you do? Uh, you can move a rook over since this rook. Yeah. This rook, well, this rook's doing something, but this rook's not. Yeah, and this this pawn is protected, so you can use either rook. Either rook. This rook kind of forces this rook to only protect the pawn from now on. Protect X square. Yeah. You can even you can even push the pawn all the way up here, because then if he doesn't go here, you're gonna you can put your bishop there. Right. Now you're threatening Which I think to I pushed this pawn to put this knight here. Yeah, so, so now yeah. he has to do this kind of thing. And then you can say, great, now I got an attack here, and I got my knight in a nice square, and, you know, he might push on your knight. Knight's good. And you got to figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, but, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. You even have moves like that. Oh, ooh. Are you trapping the queen again? You can go here, right? Go there. But then, are, are you trapping the queen again? <laughs> yep, now he is. Yeah, you can't get away! Right? So, yeah. Anyway. So, I, I, I think you should not do this move for a couple of reasons. One, your bishop is solid. In fact, both of your bishops are solid. I don't want to give up my bishop. But I, yeah, I'm not going to give up my, my rook. So, okay, I'm not going to give up the bishop without a fight. Let him take. Because he might not take. Which is, and if he does take and I just take back, I'm okay too. So what can I do in case, you know, what can I do in otherwise? Well, I can do that. Um, yeah, I don't want to just put him there right away. I only have one protector and he has two attackers. But, yeah. Yeah, uh, you can go there after this. Um, and if he takes, I think I'm still just fine because his queen needs to get a tempo to attack the pawn. His queen, right, didn't use the tempo yep. to attack the pawn. Um, and I still have the knight to maybe come in and protect the pawn. I can get a rook behind it um, with discovered attacks. Maybe if I need, I, I have chances. I, I kind of like what I'm doing. I, I think I'm in the game. So yeah, I, I think you take, uh, so one of the basic things, but I think that's gonna be a later lesson, is don't help your opponent improve that queen to attack your pawn. But I did see that, and you saw, and you, I know you saw it in the uh, comments, that, um, you know, don't help your opponent. Yeah, so he didn't take, a mistake. He didn't take the pawn. It was free candy, he didn't take it. I haven't mentioned it. Yeah, the knight move needed to happen. Yeah, and, and now he, he stopped you, so so he's got another move. He's chasing your bishop. He really wants that bishop because that bishop has been a pain in his side, right? Look at that. That bishop was so good. That was such a good bishop. And that's where, like, again, instead of taking, you even have other options. If you said, well, he might come here and chase my bishop. I really love my bishop. I can't go here then, you know, where do I want to go? You might have said, well, let me push here. One, it gives me Luft for my king, but maybe also it gives me a home for this bishop so he'll never be able to put a knight on that file. Now that's really advanced thinking, right? This is really advanced positional consideration. I can just keep that bishop lively and keep it uh, healthy. So I understand not finding this move, but later, later we want to find realize that this is one of our best pieces he's going to try to get rid of our best piece and i don't want to 
I don't want him to get rid of my best piece. I don't want him to be able to trade off my best piece. So now he's able to trade off your best piece. I like this. I like this. You ignore, right? Because you're going to lose. He's going to take it anyway. So good. You got momentum and you're threatening a beautiful fork. Now, could you do the fork now? Yes, I, you could. Right? But? Oh, no, you, no, you can't. You're right. Sorry. I think I did see this in the game. So yeah, you can't because you can take here. Takes, yeah, it's bad. So got now you have check. to move. And he's semi-saved his... That much. So maybe his queen comes yeah. here now, right? And so far, you're going to trade. And you will have gotten the exchange. But he got a free bishop for the moment. All right. So he takes first. Now, I already wrote the note, so I'm not going to belabor it. Uh, normally, you take towards the center unless there's a reason you want to open this. And I can see you having a reason to open that. Um, don't know if it's worth it when you have that big long diagonal on your king. Just gives him counterplay for later. So in this case, you might have been safer just to take towards the center, which is the general rule. Rule, yeah. Uh -huh. So again, uh, which, which rook? And here you're probably thinking, I have an open file. I don't want to use that rook. So, okay. I don't like that the queen is doing so much work. This is called, right, creating overload on overwork. the queen. Yeah, yeah overwork queen. Uh, and you push a pass pawn. That's viable. Now, I was surprised by that move. I think you can go here. Granted, you might end up like this, but he still can't take yet because you still have... All of these pieces attacking. And now, guess what? He can't attack. Bishop can't him, help. And his bishop can't help. So I know you like restraint. You said you neutralized. You could have neutralized that bishop. Now, granted, he could go here and get a third piece on it, but you already have three pieces on it. By the way, if that pawn were this way instead. Yeah, that check's not available. He doesn't even get that check. But yeah, right now you're you're looking okay. Now you can say let, now I can get you out of here. So all of that hindsight would have been if you took with the other pawn, he couldn't even get this check for a tempo, and it'd be your move. And so you could do things like coming here if he still tried to get this pawn to push. You could say okay, let's trade off queens because then my rook's here, and then I bring in my other rook. You still cannot help this pawn, and that pawn will become a thorn in his side for the rest of time. Cool. All right, let's go check the last game. All right. Woo. Let's go to the beginning of the last game. Yeah, okay, let him so, get a good position here. We were chatting about this game afterwards for a little bit. Oh, okay. Good. So if you push this pawn, this would be your bad bishop. And seeing as though this pawn is on white already, this is potentially your bad bishop. So what did you do? You got it outside of the pawn chain. That's what we talked about, good and bad bishop. He did the same thing. The London gets the bishop. That's the key to the London. So you get the bishop outside the pawn chain. Uh, the key of the Karo Khan, better than the French, is that you, at least people think it's better, is that you get the bishop outside of the pawn chain. All right. So this is very familiar to what we've done before, right? That we're, we're trading off a piece immediately. We took one move to get it out, and we're going to trade it. But two things. One is, what is he's going to take back, right? We're never assuming he's going to let us keep the free piece. So we yeah, went. Develops. I mean, yes, we went from three pieces being developed. He has four pieces developed. Now we went to where he has four pieces developed, and we have two pieces developed. Now it's our move, so we could get a third piece developed but we're staying behind in development. We want to get ahead in development, not behind. Especially as black, we want to get ahead. So a natural move that a lot of people play is this, because yeah, then back, if you take- Yeah, back there, I put that in there. Yeah, you just open that up. So again, not saying you can't play bishop takes bishop, but if we're remembering the principles of development, we don't want to. We want to instead develop a piece. Now this isn't developing a piece. By the way, you also could have tried pinning the knight deciding which way is better. But anyway, okay. So that's okay, but how about this move? Yeah, and I said that I didn't analyze this enough. I was trying to go grab this bishop, but I didn't put this bishop here first. But even if you did, what's wrong with this move? Even if the bishop were there, 
What are you not doing? You're moving the you're moving the knight twice, right? And threatening to move it a third time. Yep. Just to win a just to trade down a bishop for a knight, which again, if you're a master, international master, maybe a grandmaster, yes, you want to have the bishops instead of the knights. But at our level, no, it's not. It is not worth the bishop versus a knight to give up three tempi to do it. Or in this case, you're losing one tempo for sure. Oh, is it? Okay, I'll watch the I'll watch the note there formally. Thank you for the input. Uh, right now, I'm looking solid. I uh, I will close the other Twitch window I have open, and right now I'm solid green, so hopefully it'll stay. All right, thank you. I'll keep it on it. So yeah, you put a knight on the rim, bad development position for the knight, and all to maybe trade off a bishop. So we made our knight worse, not better. All right. So he attacks your queen, and you decide to move the queen. You could have, again, said, if you were so hard on getting rid of that knight, here's a way for you to try to force that. And look what happens if he takes. He developed your queen. Queen, yeah. Now you're e look at the board. You're equal on development. That would be a mistake on his part. You would now be equal on development. But what else would he do? If you had put the bishop there, what else does he have? If he backs it up, you win it. Back here. You win it. That's a free candy. Yeah, you still take it. Yeah. Well, it's not free, but. No, it's free. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Sorry. Yes, it is. Yeah, Queen's backing that up. Sorry. Yeah. So the knight's free candy, right? In the end of it. Okay, so he can't back up. And if he goes here, you're just going to take it like you wanted to and double his pawns. And then it makes it look like you made a good move. He should have just, the same way, he should have just backed up, let you take, take back towards the they center and open up the, the pot. Right. So this is a mistake in essence. Uh, and it's a hard mistake for most of us to notice. Right? Because no one's going to notice. It's like, why is that a mistake? I'm attacking the queen. It's protected. Well, because now, really, your only good move is to trade. And then you helped black develop. It's a, it's a simple concept that we should keep in mind. All right. So instead, you move the queen out. Um, he could have taken the opportunity to chase you around, but then that's not a free pawn, right? No, it's not. Right. So if he had instead done this, and you take, you can't take. This is like the only spot you got. And he can, can he? Because you got the check here. But I don't think that matters. I think he could take, and if you say check here, he can, he can block you that way. I think he's fine. He's going to castle next move, and you can't stop it. And now you have this backward pawn, and this rook is not looking bad here. I don't know. The bishop's not looking good. Bishop has oh, yeah, your bishop is not good right up. now. Yeah. But, again, you can force a trade and get your king there, which may not be bad because it's all closed up. But, anyway, point, point is that it's not a free pawn. You gave him the opportunity to block your bishop in, and to restrict your queen more, but he decided not to take it. He castles instead, and so you say, I can't let him push. That makes sense, right? I asked you what your thoughts were, you didn't answer me. Go ahead and do that if you remember later. But why'd you take here? Hopefully one of the reasons you took was because you realized if he pushes, my game is like sick. It, it was. It was, it was the take, it was the stop him from pushing there and potentially be able to put a knight here. Okay. Then again, here with the knight, you have bishop, you gotta decide where you, you needed to develop your bishop because you want a castle. Uh, he gets to attack, you get to protect, he gets to back up. Uh huh. And you castle. And he gets that. No free candy, but oh my gosh, a lot of arrows. Um, so yeah, why? Because he didn't take the free candy, right? Yeah. And then you were trying to figure out could he get away with taking the free candy? He could. Yeah, and he should have probably. Because he's, he's got the A6 resource or diagonal to get yeah, back on. But, I mean, but, but if he takes, and let's say you don't give up this pawn, so now he has to go to A6, which means you can take that pawn, right? So maybe he doesn't want to have this situation. He doesn't like the look of this, which totally understand. So I totally understand him not taking the free candy, but you would have need to see that it wasn't really free candy, right? It's just yep. one of, and that happens with the B and G pawns all the time, all the time. Actually, it actually happens with the with the other pawns too. 
So here, you know, we get to, again, why push this pawn? Why not use that pawn? Because what's wrong I with this pawn? Used the weak pawn? Yeah, it weakens the it weakens this use, this E pawn. Yeah, and look at the alignment. So if you notice alignment and say, man, his queen is aligned with my king, I don't like that. You would probably never push this pawn saying, yeah, I'm gonna make that alignment even scarier. Better. Yeah, yeah, push stronger. this pawn. Why not? And if he goes here like he's gonna do anyway, at least you have a square for your knight. That's the other problem, knight, by yeah. the way. You, when this move, you have no square for your knight. You have no square for your knight. And if he had gone back this way so that he could get here, when he got back here, he'd be threatening to win your knight. Because you'd have no square for your knight. All right, so let's say he went here, and let's say you took over the center. Right? That makes sense. You have no safe squares for your knight. I think my head, if he pushed back here, I was immediately pushing that pawn ahead again to give my knight a square. Okay, so instead of this, you were thinking you might do that? Yeah, and then try okay. to bring this knight back. Maybe. Okay, yeah, then the only problem is that, you know, we still have this. That's that's the only bad part about all this then. Okay. I mean, you know, you could say, well, I'm going to... Since... Double. Yeah, why not? And then you could block, or you could bring the rook. Yeah, okay. That might actually have been better for you if he had done that. Uh, but he attacks you. Now, why not take? I should have taken here. That that was the... I thought that was the whole reason uh, the knight's here. No, uh, you know why I didn't take? Hold on. What I, what I saw or didn't like was this. Yeah, but go ahead and do it. Now it's your move. Find me a move. Yeah, that's one choice. I like 80, it. 86. Or this one. Yep. Right? I mean, either one works. If he pushes, you can block. Yes, he could take, but guess what? It's still poisoned. This pawn is still not protected, so it's still poisoned if you come here. So I think you still had, you know, I, I, you double up his pawns, and you can play through. And I think you do need to protect it. Because now when he gets here, you're like, okay, he's got one, two, three, and I only have two. So I need to block. He's going to take here. Um, and then then we got to decide, because I used that rook, right? He's gonna, he gets this pawn. And then you just got to decide, do I want to, like, maybe first chase his queen around? Or do I want to just win back the pawn? Or none of the above? This pin is gone by far. So that pawn is takeable. But that gives us double pawns. You know, not easy. Not saying, you know, again, not trying to find the best moves every move. I'm just, I want you to think through why didn't I take? And like you said, you'd have two on it. Understand. And so this is okay. But then it's like, why not now? Because, you know, or move your king out of there. But why did he do this move? You might think he's doing this move for that. But he's doing this move to keep... Remember what we talked about? Having a beautiful, yeah, nice say, bishop. Yeah, cubby hole for the bishop. And there it goes. It says, I'm in the cubby hole. And now he misses. Do you see it? Yeah, he misses this move to win the knight. Free candy again. And you're still in this alignment, by the way. And he doesn't mind opening up his king because he'll move his king to the side and get a rook on you. And he's got the bishop queen on you. Yeah, he's looking good. Yeah, he missed free candy. Chases the knight. And actually, yeah, I, I, I'm not crazy about it because I think you're still going to have free candy problems. But at least this pawn is... Right under attack if he just pushes. So he doesn't. He gets rid of his good bishop that he spent all that time saving. He gets rid of his good bishop. And then attacks in the center. Don't know. Don't like this move whatsoever. By the way, you could have went here. Yeah, that was my analysis move. I mean, you could have just went there. Um, the knight wants to get back here eventually, of course. And now he does it with tempo, and then the queen moves again. 
and then the queen moves again and it's like okay you move the queen that many times how do you want to you know it's like what do you want to do as black because he's not he's not making any advancements in his Progress. position um so you push again queen has very limited space um i can understand why you don't want to double up your pawns uh but and give him a pass pawn yeah yeah no buts probably don't want to do that not crazy about this move because it just entices the rook to move the rook is doing nothing here and again he's not going to give you free candy right hey doing great brandon so um yeah, he's not, he's not going to give you... We can't expect a one-move attack because we can't expect he'll give you free candy. So we need to find other plans like getting my rook here so that then I can advance on and the And push that side. pawn. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking was pushing this, moving yep. that, and then pushing this. Yep, I, I like this much better. Um, but instead we do this, which entices him to move, which he wasn't doing anything. Well, I would have been happy even if he doubled up because it had no nothing to do because your knight's holding the place like Fort Knox. So look what you ended up doing. You ended up wasting moves. And your rook is here now behind your blockaded pawn that you blockaded. Is that really where you want your rook? And of course, why didn't you take the free candy? Your last move, attack the pawn. He took the only piece defending the pawn and ran Not away. Pawn. Yep. You still had two minutes and change. So you attack the pawn that was protected. He removed the defender. And why didn't we take? My plan was to try and get this fork off. Oh my that's gosh. That's what I've seen. Really? Plan. You I know, saw that far? Yeah, that's, that's all that. Well, I thought if you came, came here, you got your knight here. It hit this pawn, and he'd probably try to protect it in some way. Which then, if you did it incorrectly, you hit this fork. Wow, that's a lot of thinking. <laughs> it was so, a lot of thinking. So that's a lot of moves, too. So that's three moves. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's three moves versus I have free candy on, the, on one move. Yeah. So we have to identify the one move. And coming up with a plan, like you did... Um... Where you went here, then you go back here, then you go here, then you go... Yeah, that's so many moves. If your plan requires two moves, even. Two moves where you're attacking nothing, threatening nothing during those two moves. You have to realize you're giving your opponent two moves. So your plan requires three moves. And granted, this one attacks something. But you won two moves to even attack that. So, right here, your plan requires two moves. Your, so think about your opponent. If your opponent had two free moves, what could he do? Because that's what you're offering him. You're offering him two free moves. Two free moves, yeah, two free tempo. To try to Now, if you thought of it that way, when you thought of your plan, you say it takes two moves to make the first attack, three moves to get the fork. All right, so it's three moves for my genius plan, two moves, Though, before I even can do the first part of the plan, the first move does nothing towards the plan, right? It just gets me in position. All right, you gotta say that, okay, that's two moves. Uh, can I afford, can I afford to give my opponent two free moves? And look at the position and decide. So you remember the last game where he had like, did not develop his pieces. And you had that pass pawn and you had to develop the queen you could have taken two or three moves to probably prepare something because he had no good moves. Yeah. He still hadn't developed his pieces, but here he's fully developed also. And you got to decide, do I want to give him two free moves? And if I did, what would you, if it was you, what would you do with your two free moves? I'm going to get my knight here in two moves. Yeah, bring this knight, bring this knight to this outpost. In two moves. So it's going to take you two moves, and it's going to take me two moves, and who's who's better? You're attacking here, he's attacking your queen and your rook. So his his moves would come out faster than yours. Yeah. So instead, you take the free candy, he still wants to get in here, and you say, Oh my gosh, I don't want him in there. I can stop him by going here, but then the pawn would push me away. I could stop him by going here. Okay, good. I have a way out, right? Because without it, 
his knight got into a great square. Yeah. And now things like this, you don't care. It's protected. It's protected. Look at now. It's taking him two moves, maybe three moves, and what is he attacking? It's protected. So you don't care. You can. Only thing you have to worry about is that he's attacking this twice. And you could do nasty stuff like that. Because you grab the pawn. Oh, uh, you can't do that. My bad. No, no. My bad. Nice. I was thinking. I was thinking the rook. Nice discovered attack, but I forgot the fact that the. Uh, not protected. The rook's not protected. Yeah. And we don't want to do this because then we would just give away a pawn for free. Don't want to give any away away anything. So um, maybe you just chase him away. All right. Maybe you chase him away. Yep. I don't know. And then you can, after you chase him, and let's say he comes back to here, and you go here, and you say, okay, great. I'm happy for the moment. And you're still tied to this to a degree. Um, well, he's helping you, so you're not. And now you maybe could get your rook over and double up your rooks. Eventually, maybe push the pawn, yeah. But I, I like doubling the rooks is fine by me. Even coming here is fine. Um, yeah, I, th I think you're fine. I think life is good. All right, so what, what are we learning? Hopefully, we're learning. Uh, we learned about don't give away tempo. But that's because of development, right? And too long, and that was just an oversight. We know that. And then he blundered, right, big time. And so you did really good here. You did really well here, because he misses that this is me. And if you move your king, he might keep finding checks, right? And you can't take. And so then you might decide to take this way, and you lose your mating threat, and you're actually too close to equal. Uh, now, of course, you don't have to if he takes here. If he takes, uh, I'm sorry, if you go here and he takes here, and then you go back, and he goes back, you might have figured it out and said, oh, I could take. So you still might have come out okay. Uh, but, yeah, this is, your, your, your move is much better, right? Just take right away, because now it's a free knight. Well, free knight, you gave up your knight already, right? You lost your knight, so yeah. it's just getting it back. But now, how does he stop mate, though? See, regardless of the fact that it's a free knight, uh, you gave him no checks with any kind of threat. So there's no way he can't stop mate. This is mate. I guess he could do this to stop mate. And that still doesn't stop mate. <laughs> no, it's only, it only delays it. It still doesn't stop mate, even giving away the queen. How sad. How sad can you get? That still doesn't stop mate. Because uh, this looks like I can get out of mate. No, it's mate still. And unfortunately, he can't take the time to move the rook away. Well, maybe. No, it's protected. But it would stop mate. It would stop mate. Because now you'd come to threaten mate. And he could take. But boy, he's giving away the farm just to stop mate. Right? You double the rooks. So. All right. I think I enjoyed the lesson uh, mostly because we were able to identify some specific principles to work on and using the assessment helped us focus. So development, 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 king safety. But the big one for you as far as the technique of being able, so, so this is where we get back to, do we believe that you understand those concepts, right? Why does the queen stop mate? Can we not just play queen to g2 anyways after queen to h5? Yeah, you're right. Ignore the queen altogether and just say mate. You're right, Linear. Good call. Good call. Linear says, yeah, we're, we're, we're fantasizing here. This move here doesn't stop mate at all because it's just mate. Very good, Linear. Yeah. Ah, sorry. We, we, yeah. Sometimes brains well, don't I do, work I do for when I put the knight, put the knight here. Oh, put the knight where? When, it, when we kind of hung the knight or push the queen away, take it here. Say it again? I can't hear you. Really, sorry, like this move right here. Yeah. Move this knight here. Yeah. It was really, I thought, a blunder. Yeah. I think it's a blunder because now you're saying, oh, it is, but, look. Cause now, yeah, because he, he has this. He has a lot of things. Right. I well, guess he doesn't too, have that. Yeah. If he has that, you win back the knight. But how about just that? Yeah. And then you got to try to still get in there, and he still has his knight. Yeah, it's a blunder. <laughs> You know, oh, sometimes people my say, last... my blunders are beautiful <laughs> sacrifices. A 
Yeah. Well, I knew it wasn't. It looked like that, but I knew it wasn't. But I, I did see that this was my only resource. Like this pond being here. Yes. I think you were talking about it on your stream, like ponds being on the sixth and seventh Sunday. rank are very seventh annoying. rank. How they're just thorns. Yep. And actually, you had that in multiple games. Yeah, two games. So how's that? You got to end games twice, and twice you had a deep pawn to win the game for you. So very nice, very nice. All right, so yeah, it's free. It's free candy and development. Yes. Those are, those are my two biggest. D but but the how do we get to? Oh, that's what we're gonna go look at. Let's go look real quick and see if free candy and development are things that you don't understand. So let's go to development. You gave it a seven, so that means you're pretty healthy with it. King safety, you gave it a eight. You're pretty healthy with it. Um, goals in the opening, understanding those goals in the opening. So you say you understand it. Let's see about application. I gotta find a quicker way to do this, but anyway. Application, seven for the goals, eight for development, eight for king safety. Uh, by the way, where's, king, where's uh, free candy? Free candy, um, actually you put yourself down for low on understanding free candy? Why is that? No, I, I think I miss it a lot, like either looking at like deeper plans. But is I, that I because you don't understand it or because you don't apply? No, because I don't apply it well. Right. So here under knowledge, we I would give this a 9 or a 10. I mean, I think we've talked about free candy enough to where you're sick of hearing it. I would make that a 9 or 10 for knowledge. But for application of free candy taking and not having it taken away from you, I would say that's where I might give application. I would give you a six on free candy. So where's free candy under here? Where's free, oh, is it the uh, basic? I think it's basic. Oh, okay, not, yeah, that makes sense. Cause that's at any time free candy comes up, right? Uh, goals, opening, performance, there we go. Free candy for application. Also a six. Okay. Did you do it for knowledge at a six or was it higher than knowledge? Maybe I was looking at the wrong place. I think knowledge I did higher. I'm applying it. No, you gave it a six there too. Okay. So yeah, I think as an assessment, I would say that like, I, I would make you at least uh, eight or nine, if not a 10. Let's make it a nine for um, free candy. I put an asterisk so I know I'm the one who changed it. In fact, we can, I'll color code them later. All right, but under application of free candy, I would agree, right? You're having trouble with free candy application wise. And then if we go to performance free candy, you also gave yourself a six. And I say that might even be a four or five. Now, how do we improve your performance? This is part of the game. This is what we're supposed to do is come up with a plan for your improvement, and we're almost, I'm, I'm running over time a little bit, but how do I improve your performance is I think your problem is you're not slowing down and identifying that that free candy is there. And it's because you're playing an opening by rope sometimes, you're ma making moves automatically, you're not, right? It's, it's that you're not slowing down and analyzing even a little bit. I don't think it's that you don't understand free candy. I think it's just you need to slow down and identify it. So let's work Agreed. on the how. Forget even about checks, captures, and attacks. The next three to five games you play, series games, that means rapid or slower. The next three to five games you play, rapid or slower. I want you every move, every move, and since you could draw on the board and online, it's a benefit of playing online. You can draw on the board. You could do things like this. And I don't want you thinking of, like some people do, my next move. I want you saying, how did the board change? When that pawn moved, it, this changed these things, right? Yeah. I just want you identifying how the board changed. How, the board, how did the board change? Those are not there anymore. He's attacking here and here. All right, how did the board change? I'm attacking these squares. Okay, I'm just checking. That's what the board, ah, he's attacking these squares. Now you can leave the circles and you can figure out what you want to do about it. But understand to yourself, how did the board change? Make sure that you're looking for how the board changed so that when you get to the points where they're critical, right? 
Now this one, yep. all the board change wouldn't help you. This would help you with don't help your opponent improve in development. So that's the other one. So one is analyze the position, see how the board changed, because we're looking for free candy all the time. And our free candy, their free candy. And then the second part is making, I want you to really focus on development. Anything that stalls your development, we don't like. Anything that in, um, makes your opponent, helps your opponent develop faster, we don't like. So we have two things we're working on. Development, development, right? Key, development, development, development. And the other one is, I want you to identify how the board changed. Are we good with those? Yes, makes okay. sense. You were a little quiet, so. No, no, sorry, I was, I was, it was delaying on stream a little bit. I was oh, okay, are you watching on stream? But you're listening on Zoom, right? I am, both, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, the, the Zoom, the Zoom wasn't getting a, a video. Oh, okay, that's true, that's true. Uh, next time we do your lesson, I'll share the screen. I just, I need to set it up quickly a little bit differently, but I'll share my screen so you'll see exactly what I'm showing live. You'll see it real time, not the delay with the Zoom. Delay, yeah. Um, not with the Zoom, with the um, with the stream. Since, but Twitch. I was hoping you were looking on Lee Chess to see what I'm doing. <laughs> but you're right, you don't I'm in, see I'm in, I, I'm in both. And you can't see it when I bring up the other screen, your your ratings. My bad. Yep. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us for the lesson, for Patrick's lesson. Hopefully that was good. Uh, sorry I didn't spend a lot of time with chat today, but it was intense lesson uh, because we are trying something new, developing a process, going from self-assessment to identifying weaknesses, to identifying a plan for improvement. And Patrick, I will help you develop a plan still offline. Uh, where we come up with specific puzzles to do, specific um, games to review, and for you to play. It's not just play, right? Yep. Okay, we're going to find you puzzles specifically for what you're doing. Hey, thanks, Linear. Uh, all right, guys, so again, sorry I didn't keep up with chat. I'll try to check and see if there's anything I missed really bad. I didn't miss any new follows, but uh, Coach, you're not here right now probably, but Coach Vak, thank you for the follow. And NB Olympic, NBC Olympics, thank you for the follow. Uh, so there you go. And uh, Chess Wizard, hello and goodbye. We're about to leave. All right, so Chess Wizard, it's your chest in time for us to find somebody to, to, um, to raid. Raid? To raid. Oh, Busy's online. Uh, Busy's good. Uh, John, uh, Noble Run. Uh, Noble Run. Noble Run. Uh, and Josue, your, your, your nemesis is online. So um, I usually go with the person with less. Busy has five. Uh, Dimple, but Josue's online. Uh, are you staying, Patrick? Or are you getting out? No, I'm staying. So maybe you could go play Josue and actually focus on these things, playing him live. I don't know what he's Stuart doing. We're talking about playing more games together after last night. You don't want to play any more games, you said? No, no, we were. We were talking about playing. Yeah, you guys were pretty equal, so I think it would. And, you know, he could benefit from what you're learning. So let's see if he's. Uh, if he's playing people, if what he's doing. He says, building puzzles from my game mistakes. I, I told him about that on stream last yes. night, that he should be, this is he was doing puzzles. And he does Puzzle Streak and Puzzle Storm. Guys, I don't really like Puzzle Streak, Puzzle Racer, Puzzle Storm as much as I like puzzles made from your games. I think you should try to find puzzles made from your games. Uh, so that's the best way to do it. Yeah, sorry, Chess Wizard. Um, I think you should definitely find create puzzles from your games and I do that for my students um, as well as well as if you're gonna do puzzles the streaks are nice but what you really should be focusing on is on um, themes so find a theme you need work on and then do puzzles in that theme because you're trying to work on that versus the random streak and storm and racer where you don't know what you're getting right so that's more focused Say? It's like that's one of the best benefits to it, I believe. Oh, okay, one of the best benefits of aim chest. There's no way they could hear you, Patrick, because I could barely hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that better? Yes, much better. Yeah, yeah, sorry, my mic was just a little far away. So that's one of the biggest benefits to aim chest is they make those puzzles for you. Yes, they make the puzzles from your games. I like aim chest for that. But, and you can do it yourself, guys. You can do it yourself. Uh, yeah, Lee Chess does that, but that's rare that sometimes you get puzzles made from your games. But Aim Chess, by rule, they make they make a certain amount of puzzles from your games for your learning. 
Yes, I do. I, I'm not against streak and, and random puzzles and racer just for getting the basics. I'm always linear and linear. Hopefully you appreciate this. I know Patrick does. I know I do. I know Irving does. I'm always talking about trying to help you guys when you have limited time for study. Hey, thanks formally. Um, it, it's all about time, not just time management during the game, but it's about how much time you have to study. So I want to make it as, as focused as possible. And so rather than doing those types of puzzles, if you do themed puzzles for the themes you need work on, I expect that it'll be a better use of your time. That That's all. All right. So we'll raid our buddy um, Josue, and maybe he'll play you some games, and that'll work out. Uh-oh. Okay. He just raided us. <laughs> oh, man. Thanks for the raid, Josue. It was uh, this good is... timing. It's like the worst timing, Josue, but thank you. Thank you for the thank you for the raid, Josue. Um, we were just about to raid you, my friend. Um, that was the plan. We were going to raid you, and Patrick was going to play you some games on stream, and uh, you raided us while I was talking too long instead of raiding you. <laughs> All right, so yes, Busy's up next. Um, Busy's our next choice. He's doing Pandolfini Endgames and Centurini. I don't even know what that is, guys. I am not that smart. I don't know what the Centurini <laughs> position is, uh, but he's going over some Endgames. He loves his Endgames. I love Endgames. Um, um, so that's good. <laughs> yes, I did. Josue, I did. You missed it. You're going to have to watch the VOD, my friend. You, two of your games made it into the VOD. Two of your games out of the three games, two of them were against you last night, um, were teaching Patrick. Now, I didn't talk about the things you did wrong too much. I, actually, I think you could get a lot of, out of it too. So check the VOD when you get a chance. All right, so let's raid Busy. That is so funny though. Um, I, and I always need to make sure I spell these names right. I did that once. I, I raided somebody, had the wrong name, and went out into the nether. It just didn't go anywhere. The, the, the raid didn't happen. It was like one of my first days of streaming. All right, uh, we will talk to you guys later. Uh oh, you heard of a clause gambit. All right, you're gonna have to tell me about that, uh, Josue, later. Yeah. Yep, all right. Uh, all right, guys, go check out Busy's. Tell him I said hi. Um, Patrick, maybe he'll uh, uh, analyze the game for you. I don't know, but he's, he's on Endgame, so you know how that is, guys. You know how that yeah, is. Yeah, man, he loves his Endgames. He I does. Know. I do, too, so I'm happy. I'm happy he's doing Endgames. I might have to go watch the stream while I'm working. I'll be lurking, guys. All right, guys, let me rate him. We will see you later, Patrick. Thank you for the lesson. As always, yep. you were a very good student. And, guys, uh, check out the, uh, the Wednesday's uh, beginner's class we're doing. We'll talk to you later. We'll see you Sunday for one-on-one. -on -one. I don't remember who I'm rating, um, doing, but we'll see you Sunday. Busy.